I'm David Pomerenke. I'm faculty here in the Missouri Science and Technology University in the EMC lab. I've been 18 years in Rolla at this university. Oh, well, I, um, I'm German, so I grew up in Berlin. I, I did my master's on oh, yeah, diploma and PhD at Technical University Berlin. And after some postdoc, I went to California, worked at Hewlett Packard as EMC research engineer for five years in Roseville. And then, then we moved here to, and I became faculty member in this group. There's a, there's a quite broad range of, uh, I, I will just limit myself to ESD research, okay? So there's a quite broad range of ESD research done here, and it usually relates to kind of three directions. One is damage or damage protection. The other is soft failure. Soft failure is basically you discharge to a unit and then the thing crashes or it gets bit errors. So anything, any, any response of a DOT which is not physically destructive is a soft failure. And then we do a lot of related to ESD testing. So testing, system level testing, using ESD generators or other methods, uh, characterization of over voltage protection devices using transmission line pulsar. So these are the main three directions. Yeah, we've been working, you know, we've been working with pretty much every ESD generator on the market here. Uh, sometimes we use a comparison, uh, and, but the core is the, are the noise scan generator. So we have like three of them here. And the older ones we have modified. So we have modified the handheld unit to make different testing. We modified the base unit to have some voltage control, which was, which was not implemented. And, and this are the, these, are, these are ones, they're certainly not standard anymore. And we have one of them, which, which is a new model, the standard model. And uh, the, uh, what's convenient about these is they go up to very high voltage. But the, base u the handheld unit is light. That is basically a, a very nice combination. Another combination, it, has one, it doesn't have a full self-check, but it has a, let's say, 50% self-check using the pre-check, where the voltage is at least checked, maybe not the waveform itself. I think these are the good sides. The other thing is we can remote control it quite easily, so it's integrated into AMBA precision instrument scanning systems and in other scanning systems, and all the... The functionality is very robust. Other simulators we, we, we used, we had the problem that, for example, the remote control got disturbed by ESD, um, or that very special functions had to be made to, to, to call remote control. This is, so the, the generator has a light unit, and it's reliable, and goes to 35, I think 30 or 35 kV, and, and that's the main reasons why we use them. I think there's, there, there, there would be, if people, right now ESD testing, system level testing has the problem of bad reproducibility of results, especially in air discharge. In air discharge, the spark length for every discharge, even if you have the same approach speed, varies, and that causes a variation of the currents. So one thing which I think good test houses should do, they should measure the current here. And then for every discharge, they record the current on oscilloscope, and if a failure occurred, then they keep the waveform and can say, at this waveform, the DOT had this reaction, like it reset. In addition, I think one should have video recording. So in a good ESD lab should have a video recording. So you bring it here, record the testing, and then you see when I discharged in this angle, this is the wrong tip, let's say it's air discharge. I discharged in this angle, the unit blinked and then it crashed. And this is all documented. So the reaction of the unit is documented and the current is documented. And now, of course, if the DOT did not react, you don't keep it, you just throw it away. And I've seen the systems implemented with foot pedal and if you press on the foot pedal, recording starts. And if the recording is not, nothing react, you, twist, you, you tip twice on it, it deletes it. Um, so I've seen this, in, and, and, and adding current measurement to an ESD generator um, uh, is relatively easy to do. Uh, but so far, nobody had us done it. I think the main directions right now where, um, is that, you know, the, because of smaller process feature size, the die cost or the cost per wafer goes up. So the IC manufacturers are forced to reduce ESD robustness of ICs. So the reason is the ESD protection structures like diodes or snapback structures, they are current density limit. And so they have to have a certain size, no matter if it's a seven nanometer process or a 90 nanometer process. The consequence is that the robustness of the IOs goes down. 
For example, take Lua USB 3.1 Generation 2. Often the robustness is only one amp, uh, so or less. Uh, and so the and this trend will continue. So one has to do more external protection. Um, and uh, for, for for example, for example, for USB. The consequence of that is. And one has to make a good balance between the external and the internal protection because if you make it bad, then the IC will protect the diode, but you want the diode to protect the IC. So this is all done now and done in simulation. It's called SEED simulation, S-E-E-D, System Efficient ESD Design. And um, this is a very important thing for all I.O. right now. And this is, so, so to do the simulation, you need IC models, you need TVS models, you need models of the ESD generator. That's one, that's one direction from the system level ESD research. That relates to damage. The other relates to soft failures. Right now, and you discharge to, let's say, a laptop and the laptop crashes. You don't know why, and you don't know how to model that. Now we can find the root cause. We know how to do that. We, we know how to find which IC crashed, but if you want to model that, you need um, a, a soft failure model of an IC. So you need to understand, if I discharge one amp for five nanoseconds into USB in the data line, will this lead to bit errors, which are self-correcting? That's not a problem for the users. Or will this lead to dismount? Or will it lead to that the, some PLL fails and you have to reset the complete system? So one has to make soft failure models to, under, to, to understand the type of failures which occur, at which levels they occur, and then to make a system level simulation which, contain, which is full wave, which is, uh, contains electromagnetic coupling uh, into the wires, into the traces, especially flex cables. And then one can somewhat predict um, a, if a soft failure will occur or not. And one can very well predict, let's say I change uh, one single layer flex to a dual layer flex, how much gain I get, how much better will be the system. And, and I think so, so modeling full wave simulation of soft errors and SEED are the two big future directions which involve the ESD generator. There may be bigger changes coming in the IEC 61000 S4-2 standard. And in, in, in that standard, there are some ideas right now to move the air discharge testing from the mandatory part into an informative part. To uh, The argument there is that right now the air discharge has no good calibration and that um, there is um, the, the repeatability of air discharge because the variation of the spark length is kind of large, leading to difficult to reproduce results. And that's not easy to have it in a mandatory, in a test, in a mandatory test where your results don't repeat. Uh, but that can all be solved. There are calibration methods for air discharge which work excellently and we have published on it. And we're just going to publish something, uh, a paper which shows how to stabilize the arc in ESD testing. And, and so how to get the reproducibility of air discharge much, much, much better. And there are kind of two directions to, 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 um, to do that. One is to modify the air discharge tip. The tip right now is a stainless steel tip, which is, which is polished and round. With a small modification to the tip, one can uh, improve the repeatability a lot. Uh, the other is um, that uh, we can show that if we use ionizers and you blow ions at the air discharge location, you will have a much better reproducibility of the air discharge. And so using the calibration method and, and, and a modification to the tip and maybe in addition ionizer, one, one can show that the air discharge current waveforms repeat much better, not perfectly, but much better, and the results are much more stable. And that's, that's ongoing research right now.